Mary, it's a week now since the uh, anniversary of the, of, of the Dams Raid, the 70th anniversary, which was uh, a week ago today. Indeed. And you sat through or stood through all Indeed. the different events. Yes. What are, the, are there any reflections that you've come out of the, the experience of the anniversary um, to do with your father or with the event itself or how history has remembered it? What were your sort of prevailing feelings? Well, with the event itself, it was amazement, I think principally, about the amount of interest that is still generated after 70 years. Mm. Phenomenal numbers of people everywhere. And all not filled with the criticisms of a nasty warlike man and all that stuff, you know, which one has sometimes had. Um, I think that was possibly the first sort of jolting impression. Um, and then I think, um, oh, well, emotion, really. Mm. Mm. Partly because uh, of the original uh, 617ers who were there, who felt it deeply and mm. with whom I felt deeply too. And, you know, a little tear here and there doesn't hurt and a little mm. hand holding doesn't hurt. Yeah. What do you think explains the escalation of public interest in, in the Dam's Raid? Um, with some historical events, as time passes, the Fade. memory is dim and mm. people forget. With this, it seems to have increased. What, what do you think lies behind that? I think sheer admiration for the skill, guts, spirit, persistence, all the things that I'm an old lady and perhaps I think too thoroughly of the modern world, but it does seem to me sometimes some of that is lacking. Mm. Mm. The, if we go back to the, to the period itself, you were at school, um, at boarding school, when the, when the raid took place, although you had I been was. home in the Easter holidays just before yes. when your father's diary shows that he was hardly ever there and he was mm. not getting to bed or getting home before or nine or ten in the evening. In the film, um, at the very beginning of the film, there is a scene where um, uh, the, the, the Wallace children are helping your father with an experiment, bouncing marbles off a water in a tin bath uh, as, a, yes. as a, an experiment to see whether the, the bouncing idea would work. Um, first of all, did that take place? Is it, was it a real episode? And secondly, um, was it something you did on one afternoon or was it a, a series of recurrent experiments with you all doing something? It certainly took place. It is absolutely genuine, even under the figure of the dear old family doctor standing on the terrace behind He was my there father. too. Yeah. He was there too, and, yeah. and that is who the other person is. Yeah. Uh, yes, he did indeed borrow my sister's marbles. Uh, we all filled the old zinc wash tub. We put it on the garden table, which we still have in our garden, as a matter of fact. Good, solid stuff. Um, uh, then uh, he brought the catapult. I think they must have made it at the Brooklyn's works. Um, and uh, fired the marbles. I think he altered the angles of the, the, of the slant. Mm. And um, my brother Barnes, who was older and more competent, um, was to measure the number of bounces and whether they bounced over or under a string. I don't quite know why. Well, the height of the bounce, I suppose. Mm. Mm. But yes, indeed, it absolutely happened. And no, it was not a thing that was repeated, mm. uh, but it was regarded in the family as a game. It was just fun, you know, it's a funny thing to do, but yeah. people do do funny things. Now, you've, uh, you wrote a letter um, about a week after the dam's raid to your father congratulating him on the, uh, on the achievement. Um, the letter's been published. Um, um, we've all read it, in which you, you end the letter by saying, up the marble. So you obviously made a connection between the, the, the marble experiment with, the, with, with, with what had happened. How, how did you find out about that? Oh, I didn't find out about it as such. I put two and two together right. and made four in right. this instance. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. We'd played yeah. the marbles game. We'd seen yeah. them hopping. We knew about uh, Ricochet because he had explained that on summer holidays yeah. down in Dorset with yeah. stones, pebbles, mm. you know, and over the sea. Uh, we knew that it was called Ricochet, we knew that's what he was doing, but we'd no idea why. But the minute I heard that these marbles of large size had bounced over the water, I knew perfectly well why we'd done it. Yes, but 
got one behind us here. An, Indeed. An, an early prototype, yes. <laughs> The real thing, of course, weighed about five tons. Yes, and, uh, as well, yeah, yes. Yeah. Not, not the sort of thing you put in your handbag. No, indeed. The, the practicality of your father, and the, 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 tell us a little bit about the Dorset holidays, because the, the, the family would go uh, for a month each year in August to uh, the Isle of Purbeck. Uh, yes. And uh, um, obviously a great sort of bonding time, but a time for energetic things, swimming, um, um, walks and hikes and things, teaching you semaphore I see from the, um, the yes, family photograph yes, album so yes. you, could, you could converse over long distances. Tell us about these holidays. They were wonderful holidays. Um, we went and camped with military precision on a farm um, under the down runs between Corf and Swanage and uh, it had to be done properly, no nonsense. Um, tents must be in proper order, straight guy lines. ropes must be mm -hmm. straight lines, guy ropes must be the right tension. Uh, we had to braille up. Most people wouldn't know what that means, but so never mind. But anyway, to make sure the tents were aired every day, um, we were taught. In fact, we dug. I think Barnes, my brother, mostly did the digging. Um, sanitary arrangements, proper sanitary arrangements necessary. Um, yes, we walked, we swam. He loved the water. We all learned to swim there. Um, we had a little boat, a sailing boat called the Molly May, in mm -hmm. which he, I suppose, taught us to sail. I don't really remember because I never uh, really got into that. Um, we went to Studland Bay, which is enormous sandy bay, runs from, well, um, the old Harry Rocks round to Poole. Beautiful. We had a shed, a garden, uh, you know, a shed on the shore. Beach hut. A beach hut, is, yeah. Mm. Yes. You see, I'm a bit out of touch. Mm. It will be all be different now. Mm. Mm. But these were these were happy days. They were happy days. But when the war started, the, 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 the these holidays. Well, after stopped, yes, when the war mm. started, you couldn't go to the coast anyway, mm. so mm. there was no more camping mm. on Herbeck. Let's go back even a little bit further because we are here sitting <coughs> in Howden. And the reason we're in Howden is because Howden was the place where the great airship that mm. your father designed, the R100, was designed and built just up the road at the former airship station. Yes. And this is where you were born because Indeed. when your parents were married, their, their first home was, was, a, was a, a former war, wartime bungalow up in the, on, on the airship station, the white bungalow, where your mother grew vegetables and wallflowers. Uh, uh, the, <laughs> Do you remember anything about those days? Does anything stick? Because you were quite small then. I was small, yes. Mm. Um, indeed, I was only three and a half when we left to mm. go down to um, uh, Surrey. Well, no, I don't, to be honest. Mm. Um, I think that? impressions may be left with me about um, heights and size and yes. things. There are uh, lots of pictures in the family album, which I've seen, which, which, mm. which, which show the uh, uh, kind of happy rural life and lots and lots of games and playing mm. outside and getting muddy and dirty and so forth. How did your father remember Howden? Because it was a big, big chapter in his li life. He remembered the R100 with great pleasure and, mm. and pride. I think he said mm. it was a beautiful vehicle, or, you know, a ship, a sh a ship in the sky. Mm. It was, it was a very elegant uh, structure. Um, I think he just loved the whole thing, really. It was. I think it was great. Mm. Mm. And, and, and my mother was immensely happy up here. That little bungalow, yeah. which I uh, we saw before it was sadly destroyed. It should never have been destroyed. It was a classic piece. It would have a blue plaque on it now, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah. It certainly would. But yeah. it was um, the, um, mm. the uh, um, commandant of the Royal Naval Air Station's uh, residence. Ooh, these days you wouldn't even look at it. Mm. Walls were only one foot thick, one mm. brick thick. Water froze on the bedside table mm. in mm. winter. Um, mm. Heating? What do you mean? Sounds very, very um, austere. Very <laughs> austere. <laughs> kind but of she was yeah. so happy. Yeah. She loved it here. A, la a, la a last question, which really goes back even further, but also comes forward in time, which is that your father is born in the late 19th century, um, before powered flight has even been successfully undertaken. Um, and he lives on into the age of um, 
supersonic, transonic, hypersonic flight, mm -hmm. um, the space age. So he's born in the Victorian era and is still working and still doing pioneering things um, in, the, uh, in the space age. How did, as an individual, as a person, how did he make that transition? Was the part of him that was always a Victorian, although technologically he came, became modern, or did he change in other ways as well? I think he remained, uh, not much like the description of Victorian, but anyway, never mind, um, uh, an authoritarian and devout believer in the values of um, hard work, um, obedience, um, respect for authority, um, and independence, personal responsibility, mm. and public duty. That mm. is, I think, the, but that was his personal character. I think in his attitude to what's commonly called progress, and I suppose uh, sometimes it is, um, he was always thinking the next step ahead. Mm. That's been done. It was either su successful or couldn't quite be organized, but then we'll go on to the next step. He was always one step ahead, which I think in some ways, I don't say it was a disadvantage because I think it's a wonderful thing, but it did mean that he didn't get uh, some of the things that he would have liked to get uh, off the ground. But as an engineer, he was, he was not well, not yeah, looking, was looking forward. Yeah, yes. yeah. Thank you very much indeed for sharing your recollections and um, enjoy the evening. I shall, and thank you for... Um, being so interested. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.